right now at the moment, and this will probably change as AI develops, but it's not meant for huge, obviously, architectural structure. Concept design is where the most interesting stuff is happening. The most mature uses for architects is the initial idea generation concept design phase. Put your restrictions, your materials, your spaces, all of the realities you're dealing with, and then get lots of visual representations of different ways you can get out of your head and see it 50 different ways. Are they perfect for, like, from an engineering point of view? Absolutely not. AI and architecture. Yeah, so it's it's kind of a little bit of a deviation from regular prompt series that we've been seeing, but there, there are some pretty interesting prompt series. A lot of it is in mid-journey um, okay. or just like, let's say text to image, right? Because that's what architects are going to be using a lot. To start, mid-journey was a big kind of common factor there because okay. mid-journey, if you're starting out from like zero and trying to get a full-on design or picture, um, it can take a lot of prompt and a lot of um, follow-up edits and, and revisions and things like that. So this guy started out in ChatGPT to develop that. And the way that he did that was he said to ChatGPT, I'm going to feed you some description that a machine like you can learn from to understand what humans think is a stunning and interesting visual image. Um, and then he pasted in a, a bunch of descriptive words that he kind of like had gathered from different places and then prompted again to chat GBT, um, you know, a machine like you does not have to understand what an image is, but it can combine the descriptions above to create visuals that humans really enjoy. I want you to create a prompt that visually imagines and describes only the exterior of a house inspired by Star Wars. It created this somewhat long detailed prompt that he then took over to mid journey and got a pretty cool result. And then he followed up with a prompt that said, okay, create a prompt that visually describes the bathroom from this house and the interior. And he did this for every single room, compressed the prompts a bit, took them over to mid journey and then got the images. Yes, that's a good place to start, but is it necessarily applicable to architects in real life, right? Like maybe it's a little bit big. Yes, that's a good place to start, but is it necessarily applicable to architects in real life, right? Like maybe it's a little bit basic for them. So then I found an actual architect that has been exploring AI quite a bit. His idea is starting mid, his mid journey with a reference picture, right? So he mm -hmm. says that this cuts out basically half of the work, because if you're starting in mid journey from nothing, and it's going to take you a lot of the prompting and follow-ups to get where you want, he's basically saying like, if you're not really trying to bring this structure into the real world, it's basically just art um, instead of architecture. He's like saying, basically, you should focus on the types of materials um, that you're planning to use the fabrication, the construction in mind, right? So you can add these into the prompts so that it can kind of take that into account when it's designing something. He used his reference photo and then he prompted for a cinematic photo of a contemporary, modern, large architecture villa with glass, aluminum storefront, wood plank walls, textured concrete, artificial lighting accent, native landscaping, and a foggy sunrise. Second example he gave there was two reference images to combine them. So he says that a lot of times that our architects have like their idea in mind, but kind of want to go on the style of a specific architect or something like that. He took two of his images. So he took an image that he, of a, of a 3D like like little design that he had created. And then like another design that he had manually done without any AI in that architect's um, software and merged them together to create some futuristic kind of thing as well with more prompting into mid journey, right? A modern architectural villa during a foggy sunrise. His last example was uploading a hand sketch of something that he had in his head. It was something kind of abstract. His takeaway is basically like using these reference photos can help architects kind of get to their final idea. And this is all for concept design, right? Which is yeah. the first kind of like stage of architecture. The key things to keep in mind that he kind of like reviewed was to start with a material in mind, use those in the prompts, describe the scene and the 
perspective you want the picture from, right? And then also direct the lighting. And he always likes to specify time of day, like sunset or sunrise in a foggy scene. Another architect who was using different platforms and Revit, it, the the platform that the other one used as well, it, they've implemented their own AI into the platform. It's built on top of it. So it's using your existing designs, all of the geometry, the metadata, like basically everything that you've already built as an architect, you can then go in and edit with AI prompting. Similarly, Photoshop has come out with their own AI. Jeff, this architect, says is going to save so much time for architects. And now he can just go in and highlight where he wants to change, type in a text prompt, and then come out with what he's looking for. You know, like he added, had his architectural concept design. Then he added a little pond in the back, in the forefront, and then a, a little trees in the background or, or whatever. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, the, yeah. so moving on from concept design and back to the guy, Steven, but let's say now that you want to take your 2D image and turn it into a 3D image. A 3D model can then be produced with a digital fabrication, right? Whether that's 3D printing, CNC milling, which is like laser cutting. There's all different kinds of ways that you can actually form a, a physical product, once again, the process is going to start in mid-journey to prompt for your image that you're wanting. Um, and Stephen, in this example, started with a prompt of, for a photorealistic rendering of an architectural open-air pavilion, asymmetrical. He, he went on with a very descriptive prompt and it gave him a, an architectural structure. One of his suggestions was to turn it in to a depth map. Depth maps basically show the depth with shading and images, right? And there's AI tools that can help you do that. Depth maps can be converted into digital mes meshes, which are, you know, the three-dimensional surfaces where you get the points and the interconnected lines that uh, model 3D modeling software can use to print out a 3D image. Taking a 2D image, turning it into a depth map, to then run it through a program that's creating a digital mesh to then print out in a 3D modeling. So a designer who made a 3D model and printed it out as a cube. And the way he did that was uh, using ChatGBT, create Python scripts for the program Blender, which is the 3D um, software program is something that ChatGPT is apparently great at, right? R writing Python scripts. He um, first prompted ChatGPT to say, you know, create a 3D model of a cube, which obviously it couldn't do since it doesn't create images. It did give him like instructions to go over to the 3D software blender and, and walk through those instructions. So first he tried out those instructions just to see if it would work. And it did work exactly to the T. And then he prompted create a 3D model of a cube using the STL file format that is one unit cubed in volume. The response was too long. So he ended up just putting continue and it continued. So I didn't even know I could do that. That was, that was a epiphany for me. That was great. And since he said one unit cubed, it kind of auto populated to one millimeter cubed, which obviously is, is way too small. So he had to go in and change that to inches. And then he was able to print it out with his 3d printer and it printed a perfect cube. Going back to Steven, the architect, he wanted to basically kind of like encourage architects kind of see how these processes work um, and how he, you can string these together to eventually create built forms, right? And taking a 2d image image using chat GBT to write the script for the robotic arm in Python. And again, it starts all back in mid journey where he gets his 2d image with a prompt. Um, then he turned it into a depth map. And then he went to chat GBT and asked to write a Python script for a Kuka robotic arm to pick up bricks from a stack of 10 by 10 by 10 modular units and place them according to a depth map image of an architectural wall design. So ChatGBT gave, gave the Python script, it gave the, the code as well as kind of step-by-step -step instructions, right? Um, import the necessary libraries and assign the task variables, initialize the environment and load the necessary models or images, which would be the depth map, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And this isn't just for architects. This is also really useful for other people 
similar like landscape artists that have very similar requirements in the job and then very similar tool sets and, and work with similar parameters. 